Hey, what's going on guys? Nukem Dukem here. So Ubisoft finally released a blog explaining of uh, the, you know, the clash issue, the all the fixes and the whole picture of why it took so long and uh, what they went through the phases. So basically on May 11th, May 12th, they the clash shield exploit, the claymores, all that stuff. It was escalated and they began investi investigation May 13th. Took them two days on May 15th, they figure out what was going on, and then they started fixing with the test servers from May 16th and didn't get fixed till uh, June on PC, then July on console. So here's the whole timeline uh, May 11th, 12th, in early May, three exploits gained traction in Rainbow Six Community the Glass Shield exploit, Claymore exploit, Deployable Shield exploit. As we monitored the situation over weekend, it became clear to us that this was a priority issue. The team began investigating uh, exploits. Our first step was accurately and consistently reproduce the exploit in-house to understand the problem that began to identify root cause. The initial investigation revealed that we need time to understand the scope of the problem and a quick fix was not possible. As the exploit continued to spread through the community, we discussed plans to migrate the impact in short term. So after they uh, reproduced the issue, they realized that there's no quick fix. So it was going to be a long fix for those exploits. May 15th, Rainbow Six Siege project leadership sat down to discuss the exploits. We needed to determine the quantita quantitative through data, the exact scope impact exploits in the game. On the morning of the 16th, after reviewing data, they discussed, the, they made the decision to disable class, play more, and deployable shield. Various team put typical work on hold and, and as, sorry, excuse me. On hold as export options to create a deploy a solution that would disable clash claymore and sh deployable shield we began testing each possible solution as they were completed we identified potential ways to approach the issues and after a number of failures finally to found success with our last approach may 17th after the ex expedited first and second round testing came back successful we activated a switch that disabled Flash Claymore Deployable Shield as emergency response. So in order to fix the exploit, they had to do a quick patch to disable, and that took rounds of fixes to disable it. That's incredible. May 24th, we realized the fix would fully require time as it touched the core system process, time in order in which the packet are sent to the servers. However, we understand that removal of Clash is a key gadget severely impacted gameplay. The team had begun work on parallel to create various fail safes that could be safely introduced. June, over the few course, over the next few weeks, exploits reported once again and began to surface. So there was more exploits that was found through the testing. These people. Uh, however, uh, with the switches already in places, they were able to act with new report and disable Clash and IQ. Sorry, what I meant by th these people, I didn't mean Ubisoft. I meant... Um, People find a way to break the game and causing everyone else to have issues playing the game uh, regularly the way it's supposed to be enjoyed. At the point of the scene, the team uh, had already finalized and completed the operational fix underlying cause of the exploit. Internal testing had already shown positive results, but we needed to push it to the test servers first for large scale testing to deploy live. So that means, you know. They test it in-house, they found a fix, then they like, okay, we need all the PC and any console that decides to play on PC to test this on the test servers, to see if it actually works uh, in case they miss anything. June to July, in late June, the global ordering goes out to PC first and later uh, console in July. The reason why is because you have to go through certification through Microsoft and Sony, which takes about a couple weeks for them to approve of the patch changes in the game before it goes live. That's why console takes longer. During this time, we monitor performance of global changes and check signs, which is in fail safe. As a part of the team uh, fix on the on a fix, another part of the team had begun development on several short-term fail safe early in the process with the goal of creating more sustainable short-term solution. These switches and fail safe, which triggered the exploit uh, methods only, were never intended to be a full fix. Instead, it was a call made by a team after weighing the cost of removal of Clash and two gadgets on gameplay health. They were released to the live server soon after to challenge the community to report any further occurrences. The decision to remove operators and configure loadout is not a decision we take lightly. We respect the time and effort players have spent to unlocking in-game content and as well 
uh, cognize, cog cognizant, cognizant of the massive impact that removal of core gameplay mechanics can be on the meta ecosystem of Rainbow Six Siege. However, given the situation, we felt waiting for a full fix was not an acceptable solution. We needed to nullify the exploits and normalize gameplays as safely and quickly as possible for players. The failsafe solution need to satisfy several requirements. They need to be surgical so that it would not cause any type of regression or unintended collateral damage. Easy, modifiable, rapid response and require minimum testing for fast delivery. The result of operators and gadget switches were the first response to rapidly address exploits and with understanding that it was the last resort extremely short solution as we prepared to fail safe or fail safe. So what is global order? Player. Equip equipping gadget. Activate gadget. Gadget activated. Gadget deployed. Get uh, using gadget. Gadget deployed. Each operator gadgets, grenades, shield, camera, uh, wall, and plant in Rainbow is an object. Every object in Rainbow Six Siege sends a message packet to server with step of actions performed. For example, when you use your gadget, operators send a message. I'm equipping my gadget and I am using my gadget in the sequence. At the same time, your gadget also do sending message servers such as gadget activated, gadget deployed. The server sends a message to other players that in your match. Previously, ordering in which these messages were delivered server were only guaranteed per object. This meant that uh, there was a chance for failure when the message go missing or delivered out ordering to the server. The exploit took advantage of the flaw in the network protocol by spamming the action simultaneously, which causes the probability network message would fail to be properly received. The result of mistaking replication over server meant players would fail to correctly display the intended actions. So when people kept spamming, they were, the server got overloaded and didn't receive the message that, you know, the gadgets would use. So that's how the exploit happened. So, so this is what happened. Basically, uh, that's what caused the bug. Our situation to the problem of global ordering modifies network engine to globally. All messages are sent multiples and uh, So Basically, if someone spams now, uh, they make sure the servers get it, so that won't be an issue. Only downside, I'm afraid that um, if someone can, um, well, when people spam the gadgets before, I would think the servers would slow down and cause a lag, and that was an issue on PC. Uh, and I think they they address they're they're still fixing that issue where they're banning people who causes the game to slow down. But now that they should not be able to exploit based on they should receive every single thing now. All right, let's go see what this means for future. With global ordering in place, the actions are uniform replicated for all players across the match as they are now ordering at a global level, as opposed to client level. We evaluate and weigh additional bandwidth costs while increased slightly. It may not affect your gameplay experience. This should prevent for issues, outgoing delivery of messages and similar exploits. The exploits and the impact committee were highly highlighted by va value operator and gadget switches. Okay, so that's what happened. Uh, let me know if this um, all works for you. Anyways, if you guys are interested coming to my uh, live streams when I stream Rainbow Six Siege or any other game and you just want to support and just come and hang out and talk to me, you can come to my Facebook page. I live stream there. And if you guys become a supporter, you guys get exclusive emotes that you guys get used. It's only $5 a month that supports me if you guys can. If you guys want to, it's there for you. And then um, basically what the emotes are similar to these t-shirts, you know, Rainbow Six Siege T-shirts that you guys can find all this in the description if you guys want your favorite operators. All right, guys, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.